Okay, O3 concepts. Uh, in O3 concepts, we're going to set up a drawing, and in addition to setting up our usual specifications, which is units and limits at 44, 34 feet, and zoom all, and a grid of 12, everything looks good. In addition to that, we're going to do one extra step, and that is we're going to format a text style. You can do it here through the menu, or you can do it through this styles toolbar. Uh, this icon right here will take you to the same place as format text style. And we just want to have a text style set up for notes that we're going to do, any old general notes. So we're going to do a new, we need a new name, and we're going to call it MS, which is going to stand for model space and I'm going to make it six inches. That's just for my information that this text is going to be six inches high and it's going to be for notes. And I'll say OK. There it is. I hit my R and I'm, I'm going to pick the Roman S and I'm going to make this six inches high. Don't need to type this, the inch symbol. Apply it and close it. And you can see up here now that I have two. This is the old one and this is my new one. So at this point I can uh, use my multi-line text for a few different things. It's more flexible. I click the multi-line text and I give it a bounding box like so. This can move around here. I can start typing. Keep your caps lock on. You might as well get used to it. Start typing and all text will wrap in this box. That is really handy because if you run out of room you can fix it. Blah blah blah, that's going to go on. I'm going to say OK. Let's say my drawing starts to get big and I don't have that much room for this. I can take this and grab this grip and move it over. Still have all the text in there, but it takes up uh, a smaller amount of room. So that's really handy, just being able to switch that around. The other thing that's really handy, just like single line text, you can edit with a double click that brings this back up. You can select particular words and underline them. This font can't be bolded or italicized, but some can. You can change something a particular color should you want to and say OK. Um, now if we need it inside a title block, for example, we want to center it, this one will give us the opportunity to do that. So I'm going to say this is my bounding box here. So that's one click and two clicks. I'm going to say these first three are my horizontal adjustments. So I click the center. You can see that the cursor goes there. And I'm going to click these three are for vertical. If I click this middle one, it hops down to the middle of that bounding box I drew. And now I can put my name here and say OK. And it's it's centered right in that box. Sometimes these have changed, you can see, and if for some reason it gets a little messed up, you can still take this grip and snap it back to where you want it, and it will be redone there. The other thing that's nice about this, you can switch case if I wanted to go to lower case there or back to upper. You can also type in some symbols, which is handy, so if I want a 45 degree angle and say OK. You can see it puts in the symbol uh, for degrees for me. So that is multi-line text. If you forget to set a text style, you may find that you have giant text, which is no fun to deal with. So you want to remember that for any uh, new drawing that you set up. OK, on to the chamfer command. So if I have a rectangle here and I wanted to quickly angle the corner without having to 
you know, figure out I want it to be six inches down here and six inches over there. I don't want to have to draw another line and offset and do a bunch of stuff. I can use this command, chamfer. You click it, it says select the first line. Well, right now there's a distance of zero set, so I have to press D for distance, enter. I'm going to make my distance be one foot, so 12 inches, enter. My second distance, let's make it different. Let's make it 24, enter. Select the first line. This is the one that will get the 12 inch, and this is the line that's going to get the 24 inch. And you can see that if you measure from the corner of the original rectangle about here, you can see this is one foot down from there, and this is two foot over. So let's do that one more time and put in our distance again. And this time let's have them both at one foot. And let's do M for multiple. And this will let us do a whole number of corners in a row. There we go. Now the fillet command is similar to the chamfer except it's going to round off the corner. And you have to tell it the radius as though you have a little circle sitting in the corner there and it will round it off. You have to tell it the radius of that circle. So you come into the fillet command and you tell it R for radius and let's do a six inch radius and just do one here. Click and click and there's our six inch radius. You can press enter to re-enter the command and let's change it to 12 and do M for multiple and then we can do the rest of these three at a 12 inch radius. And that is your fillet command. The next one is construction line command. Uh, sometimes you want to uh, project some information. So you will draw construction lines. So this is the icon for construction lines. So if I want to project to height lines here and to width lines, I might use this construction line. It says specify a point or horizontal vertical angle bisect offset. I can do this with two points and put it in like that, or I can say V for vertical and just click one point, and there's my two width lines, and now I'll put in my sideways horizontal line, so construction line H and I want it right here and right here and you can see we've lost our object it's behind there so we should be able to send it to the front and there it is back in the front and there's just some projection lines what I don't like about this is it gets very busy okay it gets very busy um, so I'm going to show you that I usually do this a different way here's an eight foot square small little room and I'm going to offset some walls here using my offset. The distance is uh, six inches and I'm going to offset those and then I'm going to use my fillet and put a radius of zero and do a multiple and fix up those corners and then I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to put in a doorway and let's say we know that it's six inches over here the temptation is really to draw a line here and go six inches over and then click there just be careful about doing that when you print this out there's an extra line right there and it will print out darker so it gets messy and and you lose some marks so uh, make sure you delete it if you use that method. I'm going to offset uh, a distance of 30 inches for my doorway here. Click it over on this side and there's my doorway. And I'm just going to use this trim command. I click it and I press enter to select everything and at that point just click what you want to disappear. So here is my room and I'm going to put a line across here and I'm going to show you how to project lines without using these construction lines here because they get really busy. Uh, so we want to make an elevation of this doorway wall. So 
I'm going to, I'm just going to turn a different color so you can see. I'm going to draw a line from here, click this line first, and then up 8 feet, which is standard ceiling height. I know this goes over 8 feet and comes down, and I know that that lines up. But I need to get my doorway in, so again, I can click here, up to my intersection, and then 6 foot 8. I know it comes 30 inches across and down, but I've used these two construction lines to get my my widths in quickly, and at this point I want to get rid of these projection lines. You can see that it's a lot less complicated than having these crazy in lines that go to infinity if you do it this way. So I'm going to do a little crossing box here and then just delete those two lines and that's the start of my elevation. And that's construction lines and polyline. A polyline is just a, a one unit that is multi-line segments. So when we go into our line command and we make different segments, each one of these is a separate entity. But if you use polyline, I'm going to change back here. If you use the polyline command and you put in a bunch of line segments, it actually is one unit. And that can be kind of handy. I don't use it too much, but uh, if I want it, I don't know. I can. The thing about polyline, you can also set width. So here's a polyline, and now I'm about to continue. I'm going to set a width W. It asks me what's the starting width, and I'm going to make it 24, and I'm going to make the ending width 0, which is sort of your default line thickness. And when I come across here, you can see that that's what I have. If I measured the distance, this would be 24 and this comes down to zero. So uh, polyline lets you draw continued segments that all are one unit. It also lets you uh, put in arcs and then back to L for line and it's all one unit.